Munchkins, it's Munchie here and welcome back to the channel. Today's topic is going to be about special need hamsters, specifically brachycephalic hamsters or brachycephalic hamsters, depending on where you're from. Brachycephalic is what you probably have heard me say a few many times, but might not understand what that means. It's just kind of short for brachycephalic hamsters or brachycephalic hamsters. How many brachycephalic hamsters do I currently have at the rescue? Numbers displayed here by the time I upload this. And you might be wondering, what's so special about these hamsters? How do they came to be? And is there just a way that we can care for them because they are classified as special need animals? Wait, before I begin, there's also another condition known as hydrocephalic or hydrocephalic hamsters, which two of them are very close and similar, but have significant differences. Hydrocephalic hamsters have water on the brain, which is unfortunately spinal fluid that is being pressed on their skull, which gives them a very round shape. So picture me with a bump in my head. It can be found in cats, dogs, and different species of rodents. But specifically, only hydro and brachy can be found in Syrian hamsters. When it comes to the hamster groups, that is. The next one is brachy hamsters, which is just the definition of a skull deformity, something that's not normal. So for centuries, people had bred brachycephalic dogs and cats, like Persian cats, and also Frenchies and bulldogs. Unfortunately, due to the way we are breeding these animals, they keep getting a shorter snout and a shorter snout and a shorter snout. Snout. This can also be seen in dwarf rabbits, which is unfortunate because they have a load of complications for their health. These are not animals you wish to be having purposefully. And unfortunately, this is in our pet hobby, whether we like it or not. It is due to genetics. It is unfortunately being bred by breeding mills who supply pet stores. And breeding mills, as you guys probably have heard the term before, do not keep their animals like how we keep our animals and our husbandry. They are not provided adequate space. They are not really provided any roaming or wheels, nothing like that. They are shoved in a warehouse that's supposed to be ventilated and they have horrible conditions. So please don't support pet stores and try to think of adoption first. There's also people who will claim they're ethical and will actually breed this disability or other disabilities in our community. And there's people out there that even want to breed a specific type of Rowan hamster and they want eyeless hamsters, meaning they don't come with eyes. But they think this is completely fine because it produces colors that they want for their line and lineage. And this is a big red flag to anyone who wants to breed a disability. Do you want your pet or maybe even a loved one to be bred purposefully to not have eyes? No. Do you want your family member or pet to be bred to have the squish face disability that causes them a lot of pain? No. So if you do see that in our community, speak up. Don't let people think this is okay. It's not. But whether we talk about bricky hamsters or hydro hamsters, both of them have very similar symptoms. They have tooth issues, sinus issues, eye issues, undersizing issues, or just malnutrition caused by teeth issues in the first place, which you can see or be heard people saying that you look stunted, they look like miniatures or dwarves. They really aren't, they aren't their own subspecies. It's just a disability being bred. These hamsters also, I like to call them egg shape. They have those squished pouty face appearance that looks like you have very round cheeks and then closer to the top, it's more of an egg shape. I have had several different spectrums of this disability at our rescue, which blew up during the pandemic. And that's why you guys started to see me mentioning them. There's so many others out there that get missed that are currently being sold by pet stores and being sold to people, new time hamster owners that don't know to check the teeth, do body checks, to know what to look out for. And these animals unfortunately suffer at our own expense. So this is actually a good reason why videos like these and and videos like Rose Hams, who actually made a hydrocephalic video before me. By the way, thank you, dear. I, I saw your video. <laughs> this is why people advocate for information to be spread because we don't want the continuation of this suffering to occur. The only thing that I have not seen while in my care of these brachy hamsters versus hydro hamsters, it's hydro hamsters are known to have neurological issues, but that's probably due to the pressure on the brain. However, brachy hamsters that I've currently had thus far have not exhibited any neurological issues, and we do take them to the vets to be evaluated for either confirming brachycephalic hamster, even though we already know, or trying to fix their massive teeth issue or abscesses, which is actually very common. We have some common symptoms here that I'll discuss further 
because you guys are probably very curious as to what to look out for with these special hamsters. Now, the only way you can tell if you have water on the brain is by a veterinarian imaging. So just saying you have a hydro hamster does not verify that they have water on the brain and they must be at an appropriate size and age in order to get the good imaging because if you're younger and smaller, it is much harder to see if there is water on the brain. So let's talk about teeth conditions because that's like the number one topic. However, not all my brachy hamsters that I have had have had teeth problems. We've had one that has had all their teeth, no issues. We've had others that have stubs because the roots have been damaged. So the teeth have kind of broken off due to them chewing on stuff, but their teeth are still there. However, eventually they will fall out. If they are not growing each day and you're not seeing changes in the size, it's more than likely due to damaged roots, but you might see misaligned or curled teeth. That is a very, very dangerous mouth right there that could cause impaction. And when you have impacted teeth because rodents teeth their incisors keep constantly growing and they have to chew on stuff in order to trim them unfortunately if they have impacted that requires immediate vet attention and to hopefully remove those problematic teeth if they are coming in straight however they are not that much of a problem however there are fused teeth on these guys and we've had a couple of them with fused bottom jaw teeth that cannot be removed and or cannot be appropriately damaged but over time hamsters may damage them tooth versus extractions can cost you quite a bit of money. Also, some brachycephalic hamsters or hydro hamsters can have missing teeth from birth. You will be the lucky few. That way you can easily provide them with a wet food diet because they're gonna be needing special dietary needs, which if you have missing teeth or teeth that break very easily, wet food diets are recommended. Sea mixes and lap lock mixes are not recommended. And there's a wonderful formula called Wendell's Wonder Formula or food, either, either, or that is found on Cheeks and Squeaks website. They have some for under a year old and some for above a year old. And it's very easy to make formula at home. Before I forget, there could also be abscesses in the mouth and around the mouth due to impacted teeth and bacteria getting inside those wounds. We've seen a lot of hamsters with cheek or jaw abscesses, which are very, very scary and dangerous depending on how long they've had that for. Sometimes you could just be flushing out the infection and everything's okay. Other times, not so much, and it could cause further damage to the hamster. So it's always a good idea doing mouth checks along with your occasional body check. This is just scruffing the hamster by the shoulder blades, carefully rotating them, having them placed on their back, getting a good look at their teeth, which you would have to spread their teeth wide. Don't worry, it doesn't hurt them. If you have a very well-trained hamster, they will not struggle. If you have a not so trained hamster, they will struggle. And it's better to check your hamster like this. If they get injured, they're not gonna tell you. So it's a good idea to check these things. Don't feel bad, it is the way of hamster keeping. So besides having teeth issues, they have sinus issues, which can involve watery or crusty eyes. And this is due to just not a fully developed eyelid, I've been told by my vet. I believe that's what she said, where unfortunately, because of their skull deformity, the eyelid's not really there. So they get a lot of dust particles in their eyes and their eyes can be bulging. Not all the time, depending on the skull deformity, but you can definitely tell when you have bug-eyed hamsters that their eyes are closer to their nose, even though the nose is supposed to be further out here. It's very sad, but they do get sinus issues like blocks, nasal passages. They can get sniffling, which is very common. They do not have to be sick in order to sniffle, but you can definitely pick up on that. I've had so many brachy hamsters that I hear sniffling constantly. But unfortunately, this can cause nasal tumors that, again, with imaging, can be found. We have one brachy hamster that has a nasal tumor, but thankfully it hasn't grown since discovering it. So she still is with us. We were not expecting her to live that long, but thankfully it has not grown since. So she's still living a happy life. Well, for me, unfortunately, there was one that got taken by cancer due to an infection in their jaw because a tooth broke off and the tooth got lodged in the cheek, but but due to the infection in the actual root itself affected her entire jaw. It's complicated. I miss her so, so much. Her name was Blossom and I was a mess when we lost her because she was such the sweetest gal and just watching her lose weight was 
the most terrifying thing ever. So unfortunately, cancer, abscesses, tumors. We've had some tumors that have just rapidly developed and heart disease. Heart disease is very well known in the hamster community and I have lost several to heart disease. And these hamsters, I want to note the one that I lost that was a brachy hamster was also a satin hamster. Now satin, if it's double satin, that is dirty genetics. And that's not very healthy genetics, but I have been finding a lot of satin hamsters having genetic or medical issues that they have passed at a very young age. It might not be prevalent in breaking hamsters, but for her case, it was. So what about chew toys? Unless the brachy hamster has all four teeth, no chew toys are needed. If your hamster has brittle teeth, you don't wanna risk them breaking off or misaligning or curling if you give them chew toys. Now they could chew on, say for instance, the wire enclosure that you have them in and or just maybe some of the hides inside of their enclosure. Unfortunately, this stuff will happen, but you want them to not be breaking their brittle teeth because it can cause more complications at your vets down the line and in your wallet. Yes, there's been a lot of vet trips with us, it's, it's been a lot. But those with fused hardened teeth, which there's a few that we have, they can have paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls, something that's soft that they can still chew on that would not be a problem. Now with fused teeth, unfortunately, they just will not break off, so it is recommended to get them trimmed. And unfortunately, since they're fused, you can't extract them. But I'll talk about that here in a bit. The thing about their care is that they do require a vet trip. Do not own or rescue a brachy hamster or a hydro hamster unless you have the funds for them. Please do not pass them off to a rescue because if they are unprepared, and or do not have the room for them, do not forcibly put this burden on the rescue that is run either by volunteers or, I mean, usually it's run by volunteers. What I'm saying is there's a difference between government funded and privately funded rescues. Do not burden a rescue by saying, hey, I just rescued this guy. I'm gonna flip them on you because I don't have the care for them. So basically you're just putting them back in that situation. I have to be super clear with you guys. Please do not play rescue unless you have an end game and can provide fully what they need while in your care. Do not pass them off to another rescue because you're unprepared. All right, all right, cool, thank you. So when it comes to exotic vets, the recommended vet to bring your brachy hamster to is going to be a rabbit vet. So if they have any experience with tooth trims or with extractions, more than likely a rabbit vet is your go-to person. So please ask. There is vets that are gonna be very comfortable with tooth trims. There's gonna be vets that are very comfortable with tooth extractions. However, there's gonna be less vets being comfortable with extractions altogether because they did not study this, they did not have the knowledge or experience, and they do not want to perform anything despite your hamster being in obvious pain. I had someone here that had a hamster with curling teeth, but the vet was so inexperienced, they would only recommend tooth trims, which is not going to solve the curling tooth issue. If it's misaligned at the root or curling already, you're just prolonging the inevitable. So tooth trims can be performed with or without anesthesia. There is experienced vets that do not need anesthesia and or your hamster doesn't have a complicated problem with their teeth and or they don't squirm. If you got a squirmy one, if you got complications, they're gonna have to put them under. And also putting them under with vets that don't feel comfortable having them awake, that's perfectly okay as well. So if this has not already been mentioned, curling teeth, misaligned teeth need to be extracted. They will continue to be a problem. Straightened teeth that are fused at the jaw that continuously keep growing just need tooth trims. And the jaw itself, the bottom incisors, unfortunately are the hardest to extract and you could accidentally break the jaw. That's why a lot of vets do not wish to extract unless absolutely necessary. It is a possibility that your hamster could actually break and damage the roots where it will eventually fall out. That happened to Bunny. So rest in peace, Bunny. She's no longer with us and she passed away in her owner's care due to complications, I believe, with like some sort of tumor. But anyways, with her, we tried our best to break the root or damage the root so the tooth doesn't grow back. And unfortunately it grew back, I think maybe one other time, but then she damaged the bottom teeth herself and they never grew back. So she was just a mouthless hamster that just loved gnawing on your fingers and it was the cutest thing ever. Oh God, I miss her so much. But yeah, there will be times when your hamster will break their own teeth and you will never see them again. But don't fret, if your own vet cannot remove the root of the tooth, it can be very hard due to the small size of their tooth and mouth. I saw someone trying to shame their vet in one of the groups saying that they probably did a terrible job, but no, it is very hard. Try to extract a small object yourself. Can they actually live 
normal life? Well, yes and no. Hydro, due to the pressure on their skull, live a much shorter life than brachy hamsters. Brachies can live normal lives and can exceed two plus years. Don't really see brachy hamsters live three years, but at least I've seen some that live two years. Unfortunately, while in my care, a lot of mine that are sanctuary animals have passed well within a year to two years, but never have reached two. But the final note for brachy or hydro hamsters is brachy hamsters should never just be told to put down because people don't want to deal with them. They can live happy, healthy lives if appropriately addressed. However, hydro hamsters with known water on the brain issues and pressure, if they unfortunately are in too much pain, it is recommended for euthanasia. However, with brachy hamsters and people saying, well, they don't want to deal with a tooth abscess or like a tooth curling or any sort of extractions whatsoever, and if they don't want to physically look inside the mouth and or want to do imaging on the skull, that's a big red flag right there. There has been vets in Washington state, even though we are a very progressive state, there is vets that have literally told us to put down brachy hamsters or put down an animal because they don't wanna deal with it. And that is the clinic that I have before said I don't recommend, so nobody ever take a brachy cephalic hamster to Center for Exotic Birds and Animals of Bothell, Washington. No, 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 no. Just them saying that they would rather not do an imaging and rather the animal be euthanized at a year and a half years old for a visible abscess that just needed to be drained. Oh my God, they are not animal people. Do not give in to this clinic. I don't recommend it. We've had issues with this clinic in the past because they wanted to put down a perfectly fine hamster and the hamster has recovered. Center for Birds and Exotic Animal Clinic of Bothell is a no, no, no for your brachy hydro needs. Do not, do not. All right, do not. So thank you guys so much for watching. I seriously appreciate if you stayed all the way till the very end. Leave a comment down below if you've seen any sort of hydro or breaking hamsters and or if you have your own story to tell if you are an owner of one of these hamsters. I would love to hear your comments below. And if you liked the video, please share, like, and subscribe and become a part of the Munchkin family. And I'll see you guys around in the next video. Thank you guys so much. See you around. Oh, no, 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 no